Hey everyone and welcome. Today we'll be focusing on identifying the key strengths between two champions in a matchup and then honing in on countering your opponent's game plan. The concepts that we're about to learn can be applied to a vast array of matchups and we'll use Poo playing Victor against the Mausaha for this one. Let's break them down into archetypes and then jump into game. Victor and Mausaha have around the same damage with Mausaha winning extended trades and Victor winning short poke trades. Their wave clear is around even. Their range is also around even as both champions are mid-range control mages. With this information in mind, Victor will want to follow these missions. Number 1. Don't get shoved. Their wave clear is around even, but Victor will want to ensure that Mausaha doesn't get the push going if he's focusing on the wave clear. Number 2. Look for short trades. Victor wins in short trades, so being proactive about this with good execution would score him a health lead. Number 3. Don't get ganked. He's versus Lee Sin this game, so it's a very high threat early jungler. And lastly, force Mausaha to teleport early. With good execution with the above, Victor can expect to force the early teleport, which is essential versus all teleport users so they can't use it to impact other areas of the map. As the lane begins, Mausaha is missing. This usually indicates that the enemy jungler started Raptors. However, bot lane is also missing, so it doesn't really make sense why Mausaha is gone. He's either faking a leash or he's just AFK in lane. Anyway, here's a small tip. Victor has free reign over the wave, but Victor starts key, so he's focusing on just one melee minion instead of spreading his autos between the three melees. This is because Victor's Q is not AoE, so he doesn't want all three millions to get low at the same time, where they become super difficult to last hit. May seem like a really small deal, but I think that we've all done this. As Mazaha enters lane, Victor goes for a short trade. He loses this initial short trade, but that's to be expected when you're at even range versus Mazaha. Victor had to get his passive off, so this was an investment trade. He lost this one, but he will win the next. So it's at this moment that Victor can determine how Mausaha intends to play out the lane. Since Maus traded back with his E, Victor knows that he won't be able to shove him into the turret while the E is on cooldown. This gives Victor enough room to be actively looking for short trades since he isn't under immediate pressure from the minion wave. The takeaway here is to keep an eye on what your opponent is trying to achieve with their abilities and what you can do to best respond. In this case, Victor is more than willing to take Mouse up on the short trades, as he wins them. With the minion lead that Victor gained from the start, he can now use that rune to do two things. Firstly, he can use the free time that he has to ensure that he secures his own last hits. He isn't under any pressure, so he shouldn't miss any. Secondly, he has less last hits to get than Mausaha, which means that he has time to look for trades when Mausaha goes for the last hits. These are two bread and butter concepts that you want to look for whenever you're in a similar situation, which happens a lot of the time. Victor goes for a quick Q trade onto Mazaha as he gets a last hit, and uses that room to score his own last hit. This is exactly the type of thing you want to look for when you win short trades versus your opponent. Just 8 seconds later, Pobelter does the exact same thing. It's really clear that repeating simple, matchup based concepts can really pay off, even in Challenger. When Mausaha goes to last hit, Pobelter goes to trade. Mausaha retaliates with his E is great for Pobelter since Maus will lose the short trade regardless and will now also fall behind in the wave clear. Staying ahead on the push gives Victor a level advantage and more caster minions to help him win fights. He also doesn't have to last hit as often which gives him more time to look for harassment, especially as he shoves Mausaha under the turret. Though as a pushing laner, Pobelter will need to be cautious about Lee Sin. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So with these pushing benefits in mind that we just outlined, if you were the victor here, what would your immediate priority be to extend your lead versus the Mausaha? So the answer is to get level 2 and be in a position to abuse your level advantage. We threw this question in here to help train you into thinking about it at this stage in the lane because it's easy to forget about in the moment. You get level 2 off the first melee creep of the second wave. The second Pobelter kills this melee, you'll be a level and an ability up on Mausaha. It's one thing to have a level lead, but Pobelter will also ensure that he's in a position to trade immediately after he levels up. He moves forward while still level 1, which prevents his opponent from just retreating and outranging him as he gets the level advantage. 
Alright, so Pobelter immediately traded with his E as he leveled and then zoned Mazaha until the wave finally starts pushing towards him. Things have gotten out of hand real fast. Maus had been zoned from this wave, but it's now going to push towards him. Victor will then have two options to choose from for what he can do next. He could go and harass Mazaha as he goes for last hits, or go get vision. If you were the Victor here, what would you do? So we think that the best choice is to ward. The reason why is because it's just a safer player. Lee Sing could arrive at 2 minutes 30 with double buffs and ruin Pobelter's hard work with one gank, which happens all too often. In this case however, Pobelter decides to go into harass with this wave. This is because if played correctly, Pobelter can 1v2 this situation even if he does get ganked. There's a number of reasons why he can feel confident in this. He's health lead, ability to dodge Lee Sing Q, and also Victor is generally very powerful during early levels. So if you find yourself in a similar position to this, then use your best judgement. To put it simply, Apto would go ward, and Faker would harass under the turret. Victor goes in and gets a disgustingly good trade onto Mazaha as he pushed up for CS. Mission 4 is basically done with at this point and it happens super fast. With Pobel to stick into basic concepts such as looking for short trades and going for them when Mazaha was CSing, he won on damage over and over, nullifying any tools that Mazaha had to work with. If you're wondering what the Mazaha could have even done in lane thus far, he should have been focusing on shoving the wave so that Vader can't constantly harass him with his abilities. As the lane moves on, Pobelto is continuing to shove and harass until he forces Mazaha's teleport. Confident that he can win the 1v2 if Lee Sing comes, he still has not warded. Mazaha goes ahead and recalls. As most mid lane champs, you would want to shove the wave and recall when your opponent teleports. However, Pobelto is looking for a hex core item on his first back rather than buying, say, a Dark Seal. This is a champion and player preference, but if you have a must have item in mind, like hex core or a tier, then if you're healthy enough, it's best to stay in lane until you can buy them on your first bag. He throws out a ward onto the enemy raptors and his jungler set up a nice ward topside so he has pretty good vision now. At this point he'll want to start focusing on just getting gold rather than pressuring his opponent. Mission 4 has already been accomplished, which was his primary mission before backing. Now he's just greeting and securing last hits before the recall. Let's speed it up through this passive laning phase. Pobelter is literally just CSing since he doesn't have the resources to both pressure his opponent and CS until he goes ahead and recalls. At 5 minutes, Mazaha tries to force a trade but misses his key. Mazaha trades so recklessly because he has a ton of health to work with and knew that it would oom Pobelter if he traded back. Either way, Pobot had got a pretty disgusting amount of damage onto him and got the better of the situation despite going oom for it. Now, notice the ward that he put to the side brush. We often advise you to deep ward as a mid laner since junglers can come from so many angles in the mid lane. However, Pobot was letting Mazaha push and has mostly just been CSing near or under his turret since he teleported. In which case, he didn't need deep vision since he's not pushing out into lane, and this ward in the brush is totally fine. And there it spots Lee Sin. Now there's jungle pressure in the mid lane, but he doesn't want to back yet, since the wave is super close to his turret, that he would lose too much CS if he backed right now. So he continues to play safe and just go for last hits. He really doesn't want to back at this point, and sees Lee Sin leave towards bot side. Masaha goes for a recall, which Pobelto is looking to stop. Lee Sin went bot side 19 seconds ago, and now he's coming from top side. Nice. Yeah, so that was disgustingly close, but it worked out thanks to Orn. This was actually a really dirty play from Lee Sin. He actually directly walked to the other side of the lane, right after going out of Pobelto's vision. You can look forward to junglers doing this kind of stuff the higher you climb. Anyway, Pobelter finally got what he wanted before backing, to shove the wave to the enemy turret where it will then push back to him for the recall. This was a perfect back from Pobelter and he scored a kill now too. Let's get your takeaways for today. In this matchup, Pobelter identified that he had a considerable poke damage advantage. 
With this, he was proactive with short trades, kiting back and forth. This prompted Malzahar to use his main ability, E, to try and fight back, playing right into Victor's hands. To do the same in your game, identify your strengths and play to it. If you can get your opponent taking trades that you know you will win, you will get a free lane like Pobo did right here. When shoving and harassing to force teleport out of the Mazaha, Pobelta opted not to ward. This was a confident choice backed by many factors. If you want to play safe, you could ward here and get similar results without the chance of throwing your lead. Once Mazaha recalled to teleport, Pobelta let the wave push towards him, saving his resources mostly for last hits, getting enough gold to buy a key item on the first back. In the end, Mazaha took a reckless trade to try and get something from his teleport, and looked for a gank or even a dive onto Pobelta. However, it was poorly executed, and even after a beastly side swap from Lee, it all went into Pobelta's favour, and he was able to crush this lane. That brings us to the end of this video. Have any questions that you want answered? Join the discussion below. Thanks for watching.